so furious and so angry that I decided I will not let anybody uh, kind of make me staying here watching uh, and not do anything with it. Every media was shut out of Gaza and couldn't get in. What we did was to work together with people inside Gaza and we managed to get the material in and out from the Gaza uh, with couriers and people helping us. And what we learned working with the film is the tremendous impressive way that people actually take care of each other when a catastrophe like this is happening. The word homeland is used many times uh, by Palestinians, different people in the film and also outside the film. Originally, it's really the homeland which the Palestinians had to leave in 1948. I don't have this idea in mind. I have to do it because of our history, of, I mean the history of Germans and, and Jew, Jews. This is not in my mind at all, doing that film. But um, I have a very personal relation to the, I have a relation to the people, let's say that. That's, a, that's the main, that's the reason, Simp, simple words, that's the reason. I have friends there, so I want to know what's going on, if there's any chance anymore or not, or what. I'm very pessimistic at the moment. This photo was always with me, in a way. Huh? We used this, this photo for our film, for the, for the poster of that first film I made, I made there. And um, it was always in, in my mind, let's say. But then this uh, photographer showed up once, uh, and it was three years ago, something like that. And he asked me, he asked me, what happened to these boys? <laughs> News was, as I called, slightly twisted always uh, in the favor of Israeli, with the help on top of that in the beginning of the Holocaust, you know, which gives you uh, permission, as it were, you know, to put yourself above the rest of the world because you've suffered more, between quotes. The Jewish villages were built in the place of Arab villages. You do not even know the names of these Arab villages. And I don't blame you because geography books no longer exist. Not only do the books not exist, the Arab villages are not there either. You know, in filmmaking, usually you go someplace, you sometimes, you know, I would say exploit the people you are filming. Uh, you come and then you go and then you sell the material to your television station or whatever. And that was not the case with these people. I mean, I became friends. Tell your father I see him every day because I have a little picture on my desk in my office in France. He can't say how much did he love you, did he like you, especially you are a man who didn't forget for 30 years uh, the relation with this family. It's getting worse in my view. Unfortunately, I'm not very optimistic, but um, and what I've seen over the years uh, goes downwards instead of upwards, if I can put it this way. So um, I think, to tell you the truth, that the government, and I'm talking about government, I'm not talking about the, the population as such, but the government combined with the militaries have no clue anymore what they're doing. When I came back now in uh, 2003, 2002, I don't remember that, um, the situation had completely changed, completely, completely. There was not any more any idea of, uh, 
of having a future of a Palestinian state, something like that. Nothing. So it was completely, the, the whole thing completely changed, let's say. Also in the mind of the people, they were not any, any more like before, uh, hopeful. They did, didn't have, have had any more this hope of their own state. It's very, very difficult to find the right words to describe everyday life and the tragedy of Gaza. Sometimes documentary cinema does much better than what the journalists do or what the TV media does. But maybe the most difficult thing in a tragedy as profound as everyday life in Gaza is giving victims their dignity. <laughs> Mm-hmm.